Hello and welcome to NBL Overtime. We are only two rounds down and already cracks appearing for some teams and championship credentials appearing for others. It is all happening and luckily we've got a star-studded panel. Peter Hawley, Leonard Copeland and finally a fourth member here. Damon Lowry, he must not have been available. We brought him on the next best thing. Mitch Creek, welcome in. Boys, it's great to be here. Good. You're on a sabbatical, it would seem, from basketball, which is usually a workplace thing, but interestingly enough, you've taken yeah, it. Yeah, look, my two-week hiatus turned into six weeks, which has turned into another three weeks. And uh, unfortunately, Melbourne isn't home right now, but almost Noosa and the beach is where I'm going to be calling home right now. Yeah, I'll take a sabbatical as well, unfortunately. <laughs> wasn't good enough for you, wasn't able to do that. But let's crack right into the nuts and bolts right now because the South East Melbourne Phoenix, what on earth are they going to do to be able to turn their season around? They are 0-3 at the moment. And Peter Hawley, we get the feeling that the issues that they're going through right now almost begun in the preseason. Yeah, it's interesting, right? And firstly, it's it's not dire straits. It's not season over. Although, if they go 0-4, I don't believe any team in the 40-minute era has ever made finals after starting 0-4. So, it's the way they're playing that's concerning. And for me, I look back at the preseason. They had five preseason games. They only really cared about one. And that was a concern for me at the time. When you have nine new faces, eight of them in the rotation and five of them are your starters, you need to play more. So these were their preseason games, and you talk about who was rolling around the starting five, and it was that Sydney game in the Blitz where they looked at saying, okay, this is gonna be the regular season-esque. We're gonna really go hard at that one, and they looked very good, which is probably a false sense of security as well. But when you're trying to figure things out, you're trying to figure out rotations, role clarity, no other team went into a preseason like this, and that's where I think a lot of these Growing pains we're starting to see now have come from. New Zealand's the other one. Whole new team, but they look at their rotations in the preseason. PJC is playing fourth quarters. They're trying to figure it all out. They mm. went, didn't win a game in the preseason. They started 2-0. and If they had their time again, I reckon they would have really liked to care a bit more about some of those preseason yeah. games. Leonard, you you called the game. Yes. The substitution patterns right now for South East. We've seen issues in the preseason, but their sub patterns are all over the place. All over the place. Anytime you sub 40 times in a game, that's just way too many. You guys can't get a rhythm. It's not the amount of subs. It's it's how many guys coming in at a time, three different guys coming in. How do you get a rhythm? I played with a guy named Ward Giddy. He had a he had a, a, a three-foot step, and that meant Gaze goes back door. <laughs> or Gaze, I would wink at Gaze, and he'd throw me the up. So that's how you learn players. But you can't keep coming in and out every game, every two minutes, and think you're going you're gonna, to gonna play well. Interesting enough that it was – Everyone else passing and gaze and copes. Yeah, I can well, imagine well, passing it all. <laughs> well, you don't have to. Mitch, you've played for the South East Melbourne team. What do you see, especially from a sub standpoint right now? Does that throw you off having to come out every now and again? Yeah, definitely. I think right now, Pete, you're spot on. It's getting the reps, getting the game reps, the fourth quarter, the end of the second and third quarters where guys are fatigued. You're playing 28 to 30, 32 mm -hmm. minutes. You've got a whole bunch of new faces, different positions, different sizes. Everyone at different levels, and they're trying to figure out the league, the refs, the coaches, the tendencies, the fans, how everything in Australia is as well. But then you don't play enough games. You are rotating too much at some point in time where you go, where do I fit in? Where am I comfortable? And who's the man right now? And we're looking at a team where I think there's a lot of stars on the court, but is there too many stars on the court at one time? And do or does everyone on that team understand their role? Yep. So trying to figure that out can't be done when there's 40 substitutions. Slow it down, run your five, run them deep, shrink that to seven or eight guys for a game and see what happens. But right now, 40 is way too many. Yeah. On the topic of stars on the court, the glaring, glaring thing with South East has been the underperforming Nathan Sobey. Now, if we're talking substitutions, to be able to get him back to his best, now the last game he did show a little bit more mm. from a scoring perspective, still the five turnovers, is he a guy that potentially needs to go to the bench? Well, look, who knows? At the end of the day, we know he's a superstar. We know he can play. But I said this last year on overtime. I think he needed a, a change. He made the change. Is the coach strong enough to tell Sobey he's doing right and wrong? Now, Sobey's a superstar. We know that. We know he can play. But does he need that extra superstar on the floor to then say, calm down, that's a bad shot or that's a good shot? I did it. You've done it. We've all done it. But we've told guys that's a good shot or a bad shot. He didn't have that guy. Oh, I think when we... Firstly, all, I think putting all the blame on an 0 3 start to Nathan Sobey is unfair. Right? I think we can all agree with that. Mm -hmm. we, you see it online, a lot of people are talking saying they're 0 3, Sobey's been underperforming. Th there's other things that have gone on and other players who aren't performing to the way they should. Uh, and again, if coming off the bench is the right move for Nathan Sobey, 
so be it. Every other team has an impact guy coming off the bench. We need to remove the negative connotation about coming off the bench. If you're still playing 30 plus minutes and you're finishing the game, you're one of the most important players in the competition. Chris Golding did it with us in 2019. Cam Oliver's doing it this year. Barry Brown Jr. did it for New Zealand. None of them liked it though. None of them liked it though. It is, it is, sometimes it is hard to correct when you've come from being at the top of the level for, for so long. It is a little tough pill to swallow. But I think that it would really free him up a little bit and it would also help the Phoenix have role clarity in the starting five. I think you're spot on, Pete, because right now you've got Derek Walton Jr. He's won championships in the NBL. Sobey hasn't quite done that. I know I haven't done that either. So for us to put our hands up and say, we have to start, we're the man. Well, I've got a guy who's proven that he's better than us right now in a winning championship organisation. Derek's done that. Now, I'm not saying you have to bench Sobes or start Derek, but I think what you have to do is understand who's going to play 32 minutes. They can't both bounce the ball at the same time, but there is also some part to play in the fours and fives, getting those guys open on pin downs, transition screens, short rolling and creating opportunities for the big Geordie Hunter to finish around the ring. And right now we're seeing a lot of pick, pop, dribble handoff, pitch action, but are we getting down to the nitty gritty? Are we setting good screens, rolling on the front of the ring and letting other guys play around that? Or are we just letting those two guards dribble around, trying to make it work? I think you have to pick one bench the other a little bit, but bring him in, let him play those high minutes as well. And this is where, but this is what the preseason's for, figure all that yeah. out, right? Yeah. Yeah. This is what you go yeah. through the preseason. If you've got nine new faces, again, in hindsight, I think they would have done it differently. I'm playing as many preseason games as possible. And I, when it gets to the blitz, maybe two of those I'm going to have as regular season-esque and really try and fine-tune it. But this is where all those kind of things, you don't want to be doing it early in the season because these games come back to hurt later in the season. I, you know Sobe well. You know Sobe well. If Sobe sat down with Mike Kelly and had that conversation and he said, I want you to come off the bench, knowing Sobe's been the man everywhere he's played, Brisbane, think, he was the man. I don't think he had a problem with it. You don't think he had a no, problem because with I it? No, because I think you can go at it from the angle from if you're Mike Kelly saying, like, we're looking at our starting unit, Derek Walton Jr., we, he's got the keys to our team, right? Okay, we're trying to get Wieskamp going, Matt Hurt going. To be honest, we need Glover in there or someone else. We need another impact guy who doesn't need the ball. So then when we make a substitution at the six-minute mark, when you come in, Sobes, we're running things through you. Like they do at Sydney with Cam Oliver. Get the rock, go hard. And then, it, and maybe it's Wieskamp coming off the bench, to be fair, too. Maybe it's what, someone else. They just need a non-ball dominant impact player in the starting unit somehow, I think. And I think you sell it by saying, you get the second unit to go and attack. Mm. Go and have fun. Ultimate green light. The greenest of greens like this yeah. man's jacket. You hey. go and get those buckets. In those <laughs> six <laughs> minutes, you get that. Hey, sounds great. But when you've been the man, I, mm. I, not that I've been the man, and I know you haven't been. You've never been the man. You've been the man. <laughs> you've been the man. And the coach tells you, now we spent all this money on you to come down here. This is your team. We're going to bring you but up. It's not, and to be fair, You're not going to like it. It's not his f of his fault, though, right? No, it's not his fault. I'm saying that. It's not his fault. But it's hard for a superstar to swallow that mm. when a team's losing, especially when you had to sell him to come down here. And also, let, let's remember that Southeast Belt have lost to two good teams. Two yeah, great teams. They'll be top wasn't that four bad. teams. Yeah. Top four teams. And Mitch, something that you touched on, Lenard, and I want to touch on this with you, you referenced the coaching mm -hmm. for Nathan Sobey. His best basketball, arguably under Joey Wright, a pretty firm and vocal coach. Mike Kelly, is he that sort of guy that you see the same as Joey Wright? I don't think him and Joey are the same, no. But I do think that there is a way you have to communicate to your players. And I think the players have to be able to trust themselves and the coaching staff and organisation, high performance crew, enough to say, Pete, this is how I'm feeling. What do you think? At least you can have a discussion and talk about it. But back in the day when I was with Joey, I know there'd be times where I'd say, hey, Joey, how about it? And he'd be like, no, this, you'd be done. You do this, that's how we're doing it. But there were days where we could sit down afterwards, have a coffee, get some food, and you talk about it like grown men. Right. Then you go on the court and you translate some of it. That was trust. That's how you built trust. And right. right now, you haven't played enough games. There's a little bit of an injury crowd over a few players and Sobes as well. But how do you get on the same page of trust? You get that, everything else follows he's, as well. He's trying to find his role with four other guys who are trying to find their role. Right. So if you, come, if you do come off the bench, if that's the move, his role's clear. Your role is you're coming in, do your thing, and you will be one of the most important players for us to go and make this finals charge. Either way, no matter what happens. But And again, it's weird because they have lost the two potentially top four yeah, teams yeah, yeah. and New Zealand on the road. So, But things could look better. With Nathan Sobey's trying to find his role, then another person who's also trying and needs to find it ASAP is Isaac Humphreys because Montrez Harrell, as big of a signing that that was, appears to have had a seriously detrimental impact to Isaac Humphreys because right now, Montrez, the highest plus minus in the league. Some people don't believe in that stat, but it works. Montrez is the highest. Isaac Humphreys is the lowest. 
panel's difference of what we are seeing from Isaac right now is reminiscent of one of the worst bigs in the league, let alone one of the best, is what he should be. Yeah, but a lot of it looks like the shoulder's up too from there, right? When, when Montrez comes in. But even, even before, in, the, in that first game, watching him when, when he was going about it, this clip right here, that's just a man who's lacked confidence right now. That, that's a layup for him. That's a floater he's got. He's always proven that he's had some of the best touch around the league, even these ones here, just trying to finish through contact. And again, maybe it's a different look for, for Isaac Humphreys needing going forward. And this is just kind of roles, right? You figure out how, what team works best, what rotation looks best. And unfortunately for them, they actually cared about all their preseason games. <laughs> Bar the last one, they actually really tried to go at it, but Harold came in late. Isaac Humphreys is a player who will thrive alongside a Jason Kadee type point guard. A, a guy who's looking for that pick and roll. Um, these are his numbers. Obviously, they're not great, and everybody's going to be talking about it. What? Five shots in a game, it's hard to get going. Last year, Isaac was the perfect player. Pick and roll, get to the basket, and that's why they signed him to a big deal because they knew what he could do. Now, you bring in another guy who's getting all the shots now, or you bring in a point guard who's trying to get his points, and DJ's trying to get his points, and Lat is trying to get his points. Isaac's getting the crumbs is hard to pick your game up from there. And it's hard when you take someone like that of, of that caliber, a big man, probably one of the best big men we've mm. had for a couple of years now. He gets his confidence, he's in a team, he's the man. Then you go and get a big, big NBA name. Yep. The world talked about it, everyone spoke about it, everyone tweeted about it. Now it's, oh, hang on, am I, am I that big man again? And the confidence just comes down a little bit. Then he's a voice at training and then he's the man on ESPN and the highlights and all the talk shows are talking about Montrez, but then the big man of Isaac Humphreys maybe just goes down a little bit. Then it's the confidence. Then he misses a gimme. He passes that one we see that he should have just shot it. But that's a hard one as a player. To get your confidence back without trying to do too much in a talented team is a very tricky situation to play with. When we talk about Isaac Humphreys, we talk in this vein because he has the potential to be one of the best bigs in the league. Now, you look at the way that Illawarra play with Sam Froling, they get the ball down early and regularly to him. Is that an approach that potentially they need to take? Absolutely. Sam Falling is their man. He's their man. He, but he gets more than five shots a game. They look for him. They feed him. They, they post him up. They, they look. And not everyone's trying to score. They know their roles because they've been together. Isaac's coming in. Got a new point guard again who's trying to get his points. Yes, he passes. But his favorite is, is Trez, obviously. And like you said, if you bring Jason Kadi in, who knows Isaac, He'll get him the ball. And I think that's not a bad look for him either. I know that Isaac Humphries would love to play alongside Jason Kadeem more, and it's no surprise. We saw the highlights from last year. A lot of those pocket passes are from Kadeem. That's what he's made a career out of. And if that's a different starting lineup change to give him a different look, again, we've got to remove the negative connotation of coming off the bench. If that's where you thrive, then so be it for this year. Who knows what happens next year? Um, but I think that that's exactly where he can go forward and really dominate from here on out. Also, can they play together? Yeah. I yeah. thought that they, they Montrez Harrell yeah. and Isaac Humphreys were going to play a lot together. We haven't seen that. They're going one on one off. I think you can play them together. Pete, you came off the bench a lot, didn't you? I can tell. He's pushing. <laughs> off the bench. He liked that, didn't he? I didn't, let me tell you something, bro. I had, to, I had to start, bro. I can't come off the bench. I got a 50% <laughs> championship rate, so there you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah, something, <laughs> something worked. Fair enough. We've also, as we, as we dig into individual players on each of these rosters, it's a team thing. Now, Kendrick Davis is the one who's also been remarkably underwhelming from a scoring perspective for Adelaide, and now he's going to be fired up because if you thought Olgan was going to stay out of the headlines, <laughs> then you're kidding yourself because the great man, ESPN Insider, has just decided to stoke the Adelaide flames. Now, Kendrick David, he's called his shot here. I'm going to go make sure we re revisit this tweet in a few months. Now, Kendrick, I hope it's for the right reasons, because mm. you damn well know we're revisiting it <laughs> if he doesn't get back <laughs> in his right form. But, look, he's a guy that, again, the assist column is piling it up, but hasn't really been able to affect the game in too many other ways other than shot attempts. Well, he's been also really good with Montrez Harrell. So maybe that's the pair you, you roll with. And again, you look at, okay, that's going to be one of the duos we, we run with, and then DJ is going to get his shots because DJ, that's what he does. He's a sharp shooter. You're going to run plays for him. But in terms of point guards, in terms of bookends, starting fives or rotations, you're going to have Kendrick Davis and Harrell, and then you're going to have Jason Kadee and Isaac Humphreys. And as you said, Cricky, you need eight deep. You need to be yeah. rolling seven. You should have seven rotations figured out now, and you try and figure the eighth one out in the first ten rounds. Is, is it fair to say Kendrick Davis had a very good preseason? Though he shot the ball well, he mm. scored the ball well, so everyone's excited about seeing him play. But again, preseason, it's hard to judge because you're not playing against those superstars. Now, all of a sudden, he's coming out here and he's struggling scoring the ball, but he's still one of those guys who can get it off, passing the ball well. Hopefully, he continues that. 
Well, if you're talking about pre-season, let's jump over the regular season because for the Illawarra Hawks, it has been a hot start and the general state of New South Wales must be love and life right now. If the Sydney Kings are the one seed, then you'd have to say the Illawarra Hawks are the two seed. But according to Justin Tatum, the one thing they're not is underdogs. No, nah, no, nah, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think we see as ourselves as an underdog anymore. I mean, I think, you know, we've always been disrespected. We've always been, you know, just, hey, people are going to come in and run over to Illawarra. They count it as a win. But, you know, we changed minds, I felt, since last year and definitely in the beginning of the season. The more Justin Tatum talks, the more I like him and the more I like this team at the moment. And they're saying Sydney is still the one seed. I'm saying Illawarra are the one seed. I was seed. just about to ask you that How question. How are you going to go in as the two seed, beat the one seed, and they're still going to call you the two seed, Lenar? You're a smart man. I was just about to ask you that question. Oh. How can you... <laughs> hang on, hang on. Wait, wait, wait. I'm, I'm sure, sure you were. Do not throw it. What'd, you, sure what'd you call you him? Were. What'd you call him? He's a smart you man. You can't say that. Okay, I'm sorry. I'll take it back. I'll take it back. I was about to ask you that question. If you beat the number one seed, Shouldn't you be number one? As a UFC man, I believe that is naturally how the ranking system <laughs> works. So someone has done them dirty right here. But the Illawarra Hawks right now, best team in the comp. Oh, I absolutely are. 3-0, but it's the way they're doing it. They've got the continuity from last year. We keep saying the word vibe ever since Justin Tatum took over. The way they have fun with each other on the floor, mm -hmm. the bonding that is going on. This team is so close. The chemistry is there. They're thriving. And that man who's sitting next to Justin Tatum, it's very early, but he's leading the MVP. Yes. Trey Kell has been an unbelievable signing, and he's done it very quietly. Other than his 30-piece game, he's just going about his business. Mm. Frolling, days, everyone's talking Olbrick. Wani Swako Bullock was unbelievable against Jalen Adams, but Trey Kell right now would be the MVP. I definitely agree with that because when we had him at South East Melbourne, he was a little bit injured, he was a little bit underdone, and then by the end of the season, we saw the glimpses of how good he could be, how elite he was at both ends of the floor. He's a two-way player, and he was in that 2-3 spot. Then he goes to Adelaide plays the point guard position, and then all the reins kind of come off. You get control, you can play, you can shoot, you can pass. Now he's gone to a team with good energy, good people, well-led, well-coached. And it's not just, you know, Tatum saying, oh, we're the best team. It's all the players saying, we are the best yeah. team. Yeah, yeah, he's right. saying it, everyone's saying it, they believe it. They don't have to go and blow the kettle right now. But what they are saying is, you know, we come are the best. It. Come and take it from us. And you love to see it. Is this setting up perfectly for the kings of the villains of the league? They have been for a while now, and the Illawarra Hawks are the fun, crosstown rival, beach-dwelling guys that everyone's going to be rooting for as this season goes on. Absolutely, and you know what, too? The one thing about the Hawks, they're friends off the floor, too. They yeah. get along. Yeah. You can see it. On, can you see it on the court? Yeah. They get along off the court, and that's a massive difference in a lot of these teams. Yes, I play basketball. It's my job, but these guys are best friends. And they pass the ball, and they're not worried about who's scoring. It's all about. It's the beauty fun. of a small market team too, right? Like Wollongong, yeah. Cairns, because everything's so tight knit, and you do. Everything. There's a couple of bars to go. What are you saying? Unlike, nothing to do down there. Is that what you're saying? All I'm saying is, when you were in <laughs> Melbourne, you had to find out what bar you <laughs> were That's at. right. <laughs> <laughs> Copes, I don't know what yeah, bar. Yeah, Copes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Copes is running around somewhere. <laughs> Tyler Harvey is really starting to show himself as well. And we talk about continuity. He's a guy that's had continuity within this league. Is he the most clutch player in the NBL? Oh, let's yeah. one He's got to be one up off. there. One yeah. off. No, I didn't say one off. I said no, no. the. Uh, are we, are we, bigger sample size, but I think right now, in what he's done with that franchise over the last couple of years, end of game situation against big moments. Yeah, I think so. Really? Laser he's beam there. pointed at the earth. Martians on the attack. <laughs> I'm taking Harvey. Ah. <laughs> no, Bryce Cotton is still number one for yeah, me, I but I think Tyler Harvey is putting together a resume that you're going to have to seriously reconsider that if he continues to do this. And who's to say he won't keep doing it? Because every time the game's on the line, he wants the ball in his hands. And again, the team wants to give it to him. They're all on the same page, right? Yeah. I love that. I love that a team is literally embracing this. No, we, we think we're the best yeah. team. We think we're championship favourites. We, Especially as a small market team. But it's time for us to jump into the Cupcake segment. Oh. It's everyone's favourite now in honour of our main man, Corey Homicide Williams, and they changed the oh, Cupcake. They did. Yeah. they did change the Cupcake. <laughs> Fantastic. I'm going to kick us off for this one. Just something that just pricked my ears along the week. And it's Alex McNaught, who is a development player for the New Zealand Breakers here. Now, sometimes you come in wearing different stuff. Thank God it wasn't a windy day because my man's come in wearing the kilt and he's done it as a development player. He's, he's not coming in playing 40 good. minutes. He's he looks great. I will he's notoriously that. known for that, though. He does he? a lot. He, he has come in with some, some weird outfits. Um, now, mine is... We, we just... You have to listen closely. By the way, the Sydney Illawarra game, highlights galore. How, how fun was that to watch? Yeah. These are some of the highlights we were seeing. We're seeing, we're seeing dunks. We're nice. seeing players talking. Mm. The, the trash talk. The rivalry's gone up. Cam Oliver was mic'd up. It was phenomenal. And I was watching this. I'm like, man, this is, this is so much fun to watch. I want more of these games. I just kept 
watching as the game rolled on. And then something pricked my ears. In, I think it was the third quarter, it might have been the fourth. I was like, is our, are we sure that our commentary team is having as much fun as us? Uh, have a listen to this and tell me <laughs> if you notice. Uh, is one of them just thinking, you know what, maybe it's time uh, I, need a little, I need a little kip here. So have a look at this. There's that spare man, Swaka the bullet. Great heads up play from Froling. Who's <laughs> oh, that? Is that a yawn? Someone's fallen asleep on the, that. That game had it all. And would have been Derek. Would have been Derek. Hey, uh, Derek probably had a long <laughs> night at the Ivy. <laughs> Derek probably had a long night at the Ivy Pool Bar and just oh, rolled in for that one. Come on. That's yeah, when you yeah, miss yeah, the yeah, cough yeah. button. You miss the cough button. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a good one. Now, mine, mine's a real deal. No cupcake league. Magnet. <laughs> Watch him. Make me. Watch him. <laughs> what the? Momentum changing. Delavan over. Give me that. Don't bring that trash in here. And he gave it to him. And then afterwards, well. he went in and gave him plenty of trash. Was talking trash to him. Look at it. Watch. Don't bring that trash in here, young fella. This is my court now. <laughs> As good friends, I love that. As good friends, as good friends, it's fantastic. And may I also say, can I get in an early submission? Your throw to that segment <laughs> might be next week's cup. <laughs> I've got one more. I've got one more on the back of that game. So you two were down there. <laughs> I caught something from the crowd mics. Now, Gazy was talking over it. We've isolated it. Now, right. sponsor activations are one thing. You've got to do them. But this is interesting from Tassie. All right, we've got a bit of time to watch it with a willy. So we want to get your willies out, shove us your hands, get your and go to the chicken. Get your willies out. 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 I, admittedly, I was there. But, you know, it takes a lot to get me thrown off for me to say, oh, wow, that may be a little inappropriate. You've got to do what you got to do for the sponsors. But even I was just like, hang on, I, I'm, did I hear that correctly? And then Gazy was yelling, so I didn't hear the rest of it. But wow. we got mics and cameras everywhere. Love it. Yeah. Hey, Leonard, you got to fire up. Okay, Maybe man. a better throw to the next okay. thing. Because Can't Cope is coming up right. Oh, here right. we go. <laughs> gotcha. Gotta give me a better photo than that, guys. <laughs> give me a better photo than that next time. Now, fellas, we've all been superstars on our respective teams, <laughs> except you, Felix. Don't worry about it. We'll walk you through it. No, don't worry about it. But here's the thing: you got a superstar who scored 29 points one game, and the next game he gets one point and 10 minutes. You can't do it. You cannot do it. You cannot play a, a superstar 10 minutes. I, I, now we asked about it. Are you sick? What's the problem? No answer. But it seemed like everything was fine. He just didn't fit the role. He's your second best player. Ten minutes, you wouldn't be happy. I don't care who you are. You can say what you want to say. Find a way to get him in the game. Find a way to get him involved. Because if you don't, you're probably going to end up losing him. There's, yep. cert there's certain players in each, in each team that you, when they have a poor start or, or they don't look like they're on today, and again, sickness is one thing if that's the case or whatever, yep. but they have, you have multiple chances at trying to figure it out, right? It's, I'm talking four, five, six. Hey, it's been a rough first half. Let's clean the slate and 100%. start again as though you're, and we're going to finish off with you. So I 100% agree with what you're saying is there's certain players, there's probably three or four in each team. Bryce is unlimited and understandably so, but... He is there. 29 but, points in the yeah. game before, though. But on that topic, if Bryce is unlimited, you would think, as the Robin to Bryce's bat, you saying. would say the same thing. That's what I'm 100%. saying. 100%. Yeah, I think there's, there's more. Of, and again, you can take him out early in the first half, sit him down, and just be like, hey, just wait until half time, regroup, and we'll go again. I understand that too, but he, he is their second most important player. Mitch, into the mind of a superstar, ah. how are you reacting to that? If you, say, if you get told it's matchup issues as to why you're not playing, which is what we're assuming here. Yeah, but look, if you're a superstar, there is never a matchup oh, issue. The, the, there's not. And I know for me personally, I don't look at a game and say, oh, there's not anyone I can't beat or I can't control or I can't help motivate on my team. Mm. So you have to find a way, whether it's by clawing tooth and nail, you have to find an offensive rebound. Mm. You have to get a tip. You have to box out. You have to get an unsportsmanlike foul. Something to spark yourself. You have to get in a yep. tussle with your teammate, with the opponent, somebody to spark yourself. You can't play 10 minutes as a superstar and have one point. You've got to go out yourself and you've got to make it happen. And if you don't, you've got to sit there and you've got to cop it on the chin a little bit and just say, you know what, I deserve that backhand from you. But if that doesn't spark you to go out and do it the next time you get yeah. a chance, yeah. you've got to sit there and ride that one until the next week. But you've got to go all week, every day. You've got to be the first one in, last one out, extra weights, extra conditioning, extra recovery, everything. You've got to lead everything all week. There's no way 
you're right. There's no way a second star on any team should have one point. I'm not convinced they And then let it lay down. It just doesn't seem like... Yeah, I feel I'll like tell you what's going to happen. Hey, let's find out Something's really going to come out during the week and it's going to make you look real stupid. Well, whatever. Let's find out what we really had to say about it. He got to the foul line. I think that was in the second quarter. He knocked one down. Thought he was going to get... Uh, you know, that might have got him going a little bit. Then at the start of the third, um, you know, I, I always trust my players and, and I want to give him the opportunity to get himself out of it. Um, you know, but then we found a, a nice group uh, on the floor and we ran with it. Mm. Now, if you watch some of those clips, and I watched that game pretty closely, but in that game, is Keanu Pinder your primary ball handler? No. Is he a secondary? No. So why is he the guy getting pressured by a good four or five men bringing up the court? Mm -hmm. And yes, he throws some air and passes, mm -hmm. but that's not always his fault. That's right. You've got to go and get the ball as a point guard. And if you can't get open, your secondary ball handler comes and gets it. And if you're going to run an offense where you're coming through the trail position, great, there you go. But you've got to know that guard's already in deep corner both sides. Your other point guard who's been denied is far away in the other slot. So you have plenty of room if Copes comes and guards me. I'm going to reject you. I'm going to go downhill. I'm going to try and dunk on everybody. Mm. And if they come, you can go and pass that to the weak side. But right now, also, it's, uh, it's a tough one. That first play, Jalen Adams' offensive lineman now the court. That <laughs> yeah, is 100% a, a foul. That's <laughs> a foul. A foul. <laughs> really got it in his head. Yeah. Uh, well, for the Brisbane Bullets, the woes have continued. And if last week was pathetic, then insert your own adjective this week. Let's just throw back to last week's presser. Just get a bit of context on this one from Justin Shuler. Pathetic performance by us. Wait, that's the best word I can describe it. Uh, not at the level for that entire first half. A couple of little runs there. We brought bench unit in that played to the standard that we expect. And super disappointing because we went through a year of this last year where left things too late. Like, commendable effort by us to put some fight in and make a game of it. But, like, that's not who we want to be and not the standard we expect. Well, I'm not sure what comes after pathetic, but we're going to start having to look for an adjective that suits that one, Pete, because it was much of the same from the Bullets. Well, when we've been in these positions where we've copped sprays from a coach, and Dino is up there, some of the best sprays of all time. When you've had it, and then Mitch Norton said he had a tough week on the mm -hmm. practice court, which you'd expect, what does your instinct tell you about the first two minutes of the game? You need to play hard. You need to go out and bust your butt. And, and the week before, you got to... Everything rides on the, the how you start. 100%. Right? How you start. Yeah. These are, this is in the first few minutes. Right? They're down nine in the first four and a half minutes. Just watch some of these plays, OK? So we're, we're right here. James Bateman just fa face guarding, not in the help spot. Dang it, where's the bump on, on Sam Froling? So Harrison's a bit confused. Everybody's just too caught up in, in their own play. So that's the second play of the game right here. Turnover. That's fine. James Bateman. You've got to sprint back. Don't worry about your guy. Everybody's just too concerned with their own, friend, uh, own player. Keandre Cook, you've got to stop the ball as well. We talk about everybody's just concerned about, OK, I'm worried about my own play. You've got to help each other out. Great knockdown here uh, from Deng Adele. OK, so where's the help here? Keandre Cook, Deng Adele, they're trying to figure it out. OK, Deng Adele's got the ball. Keandre Cook, you've got to stay with Sam Froling. Your big fella just tried to contest an offensive rebound. Time out here from Justin Schuler, and he let them have it. First four minutes of the game. That was three of the first four plays. Oh. After a pathetic performance and getting killed on the practice floor, that is so frustrating. They turned it around in the second quarter, but that just cannot happen after everything that Justin Schuller said. Well, I mean, I mean for me, it's, it's ball, it's basket. If you don't have those two things, and then you've got a big man rolling down, especially a Sam Froling or any of the bigs in the league, you have to tag that roller just a little bit. And if you've got a hot shooter, you know you've got to run him off. But right now, there's a lot of finger pointing, a lot of do we huddle, do we not... There's not that collective togetherness right now that you see from the Hawks or so the yep. Kings, the teams that are together on the same page. So you want to see that this next round. Uh, in fairness, they've lost their best two defensive players, Norton and Sammy Mack. Yeah. But, again, you got to take this personally. I mean, you got to have a defensive side. And I speak to a lot of people in Brisbane, and they apparently were going to bring in a defensive team this year. There's no way that team... And again, win. half of it is, you talk about... So every, the onus, the media, we're all on... Their defence has been poor from yeah. New Zealand game. So in your head, and you can see it on those plays, they were... OK, I've got to lock up my player. Yeah. You've also got to help each other. Yeah. You can't just be so focused on, as long as my guy doesn't score, I've done my job. If if Tyrell Harrison's crashing the O-glass and you see Sam Froling take off, yeah. as Creaky said, you better hit him. That's right. you better, somebody better help Tyrell Harrison get back in time. Josh Bannon's also a guy that's going to be able to run the floor back a lot better than Tyrell Harrison in just due to size. One of the indefensible things about the Brisbane Bullets has been their import Bateman. Their import trio for the most part, but Bateman has been nothing short of 
I'm not going to say the adjective because I'm trying to be nice, but he has been terrible to start the year so far, and they need him more than ever. He has the credentials. This he is, has the credentials. So, yeah, this, it's confused me these first two games. Clearly in this game, Copes, we called this game he was in his own head, yes. right? He got, he got pulled off a little earlier uh, from, from Justin Shuley in the first quarter and, and sat down, and you could tell that after that he started to get in his own head, second-guessing shots, trying to make things happen. He was all second team in Israel last year. A couple of years ago, he won the MVP in the Division Two France. This is a guy they wanted to, to really lead this team. They let go of Shannon Scott for James Bateman. And I've seen him play overseas. He's a lot better than what we're seeing right now. But again, in my head, I'm thinking, because they roll through the blitz, and a lot of other teams didn't go too hard on the blitz, do you get into a false sense of security of like, hey, this is I can do this. I can roll this out when the lights are on. I think the great question is, is the NBL in Australia just one of the top Premier Leagues mm. worldwide because we see a lot of talented NBA, EuroLeague, high level European, international players come in with all the credentials and they struggle. And it's the pressure. And when the lights come on, the cameras get brighter, the crowds yeah. get louder. Who can perform? Who can step up? I'd love to see him have the old Israel highlights going. He's a talented player. He's got what it takes. The mentality's there. The physicality's there. The team needs to buy in defensively. Then you get one or two easy buckets. Can they get to that? How alarmed are we with over two games, 11 shot attempts? Now, I'm all good with go out there swinging and go down swinging, but for a star import in this league, 11 shot attempts, nowhere near enough. Well, it really depends on what the coach wants from him. And we, we, we don't know that yet. Now, we know he can score. We know he's been good. But what is Shula telling him? We, I would just want you to run the team and get guys involved. I want you to score. I got Ding Adele doing his thing. I got ha Harrison doing his thing. You just passed the ball. I don't know. Now, he's been off the last couple of shots. But are they asking him to score well, the Rock? Well, that's, that's the question, right? Because I wrote the, the preseason analysis about all these teams <clears throat> and looking at the roster and the makeup of this Brisbane team, I was on the assumption that he was their guy. Yeah. He was going to be the, the, one of their leading scorers coming into this year. That's what I thought. And if that's not the conversation that they've had, I think they have to have with it now, saying, hey, you're our guy. You are our point guard. We need you to put up 20-plus a game. Like mm. We have invested in you to lead this team, and we know you can do it. That's why we wanted you last year. We couldn't get you, and you went to Israel and became all NBL second team. It's taken him a little bit longer to find his feet, but they need to have that conversation and say, hey, lead us. Brisbane Bullets in desperate need of Bateman to fire. Plenty more coming up after the break. Shades of Rodney Clark on that one from Mooney right at the end. Maybe overstating it a bit, but you look at the Mitsubishi Motors leading threes leaderboard right now. Does anyone stick out to you? Who's going to be leading this one at the end of the year, Mitch? Oh, look, right now, I think Adams is just on a tear. I think he's in a great team, well-structured, and he's going to get the ball deep in shot clocks. When the game's on the line, he's going to be shooting the ball, but you can't turn, you can't turn down Bryce Cotton. He's always going to get him up. He's always going to make him. That's just what Bryce does. Well, the man up the top of that leaderboard, Rob Edwards, the performance from him against Adelaide was outstanding. And they told me that Cairns weren't going to win a game until Taron Armstrong got back into this lineup. After seeing what Rob Ed Edwards could do, is he the new face of the franchise, Pete? Well, it looks like way, doesn't it? He's been exceptional. And again, this is what we saw at the Blitz. And those who knew his game before he touched down, this is what we expected. He was called the microwave in the G League mm -hmm. uh, for um, the Oklahoma G League team. And he is so fun to watch when he gets going. And he was always going to be their leading offensive scorer. Uh, just to, probably depending on how many points he could get up a night. Uh, but he's fun to watch when he gets in a groove. My question is, when Taron Armstrong is back to himself, will Rob Edwards be that same player? Again, there's a mix. He's got the ball. He likes, to, he likes to pass to everybody, which is what I love about Taron Armstrong. He played substantially better this week with Kyle Adam, an actual point guard, mm -hmm. in the team. So that leads me to believe that he's going to be able to pair pretty well with Taron. Mm -hmm. and, and does this reflect what Southeast have been doing with Derek Watton Jr. and Serbia? You've got two guys that need the ball. 
both dynamic scorers, but Armstrong, now Edwards, I think it works very well. Mm. Everybody, a lot of people predicted Cairns to, to finish last. And why, why do they always I'll tell do you that? why, why, why do not. They always do you, why you can't do it. Look at these clips. This is why you can't what? do it, because they play so hard for Adam Ford. Watch these defensive clips. So we talk about Isaac Humphries. Look at everyone standing still for Adelaide. Just these little stunts from Kyron Galloway. Rob Edwards is there just to make sure, you know what? If you come this way, we're going to get you. Mm. They do it so well. Dufelmeyer, he's come in while Taron Armstrong's out. Doesn't get screened. Refuses to get screened here. And then everybody else is just moving. They talk to each other. They play hard. Rob Edwards, watch everybody on, <coughs> on the backside. Sorry. Gak, Wardenberg, Antonio, they're all in space. Clogging up the space. Vasiljevic has nowhere to go. Edwards stays down. Late shot clock. Let's not bail out with anything poor. Stay on it. Don't get screened again. If you knock that down, we'll shake your hand. We'll do it well. It's not just the guards either. Look at this. From Tanner Groves. Okay, oh, that could be a good screen there. Let me help out, make sure that I've got nothing on lap mayor. Nope. Again, DJ Vasilievich, he's coming off. No worries. I'll get back and help. Where's my help? Okay, Bradshaw's there. Galloway's there. Everybody's helping each other. Adam Ford is a bloody genius with how he gets teams to do this every single year. You good, man? Sorry, mate. I was just trying to get across. I was coughing up your lungs here. I'm just checking on my guy. The most interesting thing for me is to see where Rob Edwards, Rob Edwards, uh, there we go. Always happens where he ends up playing, whether it be Sydney, Perth, or Melbourne next year. Because Cairns have done a great job of uh, producing these talented superstars. Look, that's the hard thing for Cairns, and whether it be budget, whatever it is, is they find these diamonds in the rough, and they've done it time and time again. Adam Ford, they find these superstars, and they just end up somewhere else. The one thing about Forty though is guys do respect him. He comes in, he brings those players in and they play so hard for him I don't know what he's doing if he's having them at his house for a party every (laughs) night I don't know they love him they love him man I'm just telling you they do they come in and play hard for him you know he recruits players he knows he's going to get the best out of because he he pushes them Mm. to the brink he tried to break them in the preseason multiple times apparently and they just refused to break and as Creaky said some coaches some players just love that yeah, well, what, look, oh, sorry. I know, for me, it's, it's one of the biggest traits I want from a coach is I want you to be firm but fair. And there's got to be a point where you can push me, but I know I can push back to try and get the best out of myself and the team. And every account that I've ever heard of 40 is everyone respects him. He's tough on his players, but he's fair. And he knows them as a man. Yep. He doesn't just have it. He's not a coach and you're a player. You're, you're, you're buds, you're mates. Yeah. And you go out and you, you, you fight for your mates. And that's what you want to see. One of the sweetest things to see in the NBL is a healthy Will Magne, and we've been blessed with that over the first two rounds. And that performance against Melbourne United was one of the best that we've seen from him on the offensive end, on the defensive end. He was in your highlights right there. Absolutely unbelievable stuff from Will Magne. I love him. I mean, I, I, I just think he's one of those. He's the best big man in the league by far when he's healthy. Better than Bowling? Yes. Yes. He intimidates. You can't bring the ball in. He blocks shots. The only thing that worries me about Magne is whenever he blocks shots or whenever he's playing defense, he ends up on the ground. And that's how he gets hurt. I mean, if he can manage to stay off the ground because uh, he'll, be, he'll probably be in the NBA somewhere. Put it that <laughs> we're, we're, he's we're in parkour. Yeah. 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 <laughs> is that, you just mentioned may end up in the NBA. Yep. Is that a worry for a guy like this? And it is a worry for the NBL as a whole with these guys that start having real good seasons and end up on a two-way deal. Now the team still have the rights, but we see them with Tasmania lose Jack McVeigh. Almost lost Will Magna as well. There was talk of a two-way deal. He didn't get it. Is this some, a guy that we could potentially, if he keeps playing like this, we could lose halfway through the year? But that's what we're, we're trying to build up, right? We're trying to build the pathway of if you want to make the NBA, whether you've been on the fringe before or you're coming from Europe or you're a youngster or someone who's been there, you come here, you dominate, you'll be rewarded with that opportunity once again. So, but, uh, uh, but you're talking as a fan and a fan of basketball. If I'm the CEO of the Tasmania Jack Jumpers and I'm Scott Roth, that's a tough thing to have to deal with, to be able to... But it's also you want to be a proven pathway. You want to get the next player in yeah, like that right. to say, OK, there's only so many spots in the NBA. So they, those players, there's players that get recycled and moved around a lot. If you've proven to have two guys last year of a championship winning team go and get two A's, the next two players you sign are going to probably be bigger talents because they're like, well, they've done it already. I want to be the next one. That's right. It's a blessing and a curse to two-way. Joe Healy's up next with all the news. Welcome back to NBL Overtime. It's time to welcome in Joe Healy with all the news around the league. First off, welcome in, Joe. And also the ambulance. It's been making its way around, but it's set to drop off a couple of passengers this week. 
It certainly is, guys. Uh, Brisbane are breathing a sigh of relief after Mitch Norton came off with what looked like the uh, hip flexor groin injury on Friday night. Uh, good news is that he's avoided any long-term issues, so it looks like he is set to play this weekend. Josh Bannon as well. They're seeing how his hand goes in practice. But big weekend for the Bullets. They're back at Boondall, the entertainment centre. But they are up against the Sydney Kings, so they need every single one of their troops firing if they can. Certainly can. While the Bullets seem like they need LeBron James at the right mo at the moment, it looks like Josh Bannon's going to do just enough. Didn't they say he was playing last week? They, they said they, that, they but then he was a DNP. Week? They fooled us. They so said, they said I think Justin Shaw's words were to, it might have been to Joe <laughs> in the game, that if we need him, he's available. And they needed him. Multiple times. <laughs> they, <laughs> they, they didn't throw him in there. Certainly did. Joe, the big one, of course, we spoke on Rob Edwards earlier, but Taron Armstrong, do we have any updates there? We've had mixed timelines the whole way through this one. Yeah, it looks like Taron will be back this week. So he was on the court yesterday. They've got a day off today. He's back on tomorrow, so they'll do their final assessment with him then. But all signs are pointing to yes. So hopefully he and Rob Edwards can click on the court. Jackson McCoy also returns for Cairns this weekend, which means that Tad Dolfemeyer will be deactivated. Felix, I, I heard you say during the week that he deserves a roster spot in the league. The Taipans were also full of confidence uh, and, and praise for him and the way that he sort of handled the whole situation. And they also said that they hope that he gets another spot somewhere in the league over the course of the season. Yeah. Anyone that can show, you're, you're dead right there, Joe, anyone that can show that they can prove minutes within this NBL space, which he did do in the preseason in Tad, and he did in round one, albeit it wasn't for a win, he also showed enough. But Taron Armstrong coming back into this lineup, you'd be happy as the Cairns type and splitting it 1 1 with him being out. Well, my biggest worry, I guess, is that he was injured at the start of last year, and then it took him a while to find his feet once the team had a bit of role clarity. Wardenberg's playing terrific, Rob Edwards. We talk about Rob Edwards being the go-to guy. Mm. I still think Taron Armstrong has the keys to this offence. How seamless does this come when he comes back in? Because if they want to be a top six, top four team, it's going to be on the back of Taron Armstrong leading them. Now, Joe, Quat Noy as well. He's been a DNP the first two games. Is this coach's decision or does it run a little bit deeper? No, Quat's just been a little under the weather, I'm told. So he played their first game, then was two DNPs against Perth and the Hawks. So once he's back healthy, he will be part of the rotation, which is obviously great news for him. It's potentially another headache for Brian Gorgian, though, who obviously has an absolutely stacked roster, but it's just about finding that right balance for them. Now, Lenard, this one's a tough one because try to find minutes within that roster for Quat Noy, it's very difficult. It is very difficult when you're the 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th, 14th man. <laughs> there Sydney is have that many people. I'm just telling you. Yeah. You know, Sydney have that many guys. Perhaps um, he needs to stay sick for the rest of the... Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. That could be the most aggressive comment in the history no, no, of no, no, no. time. No, we hope you get well, Kowat Noy. But anyway, Joe Healy, you're going to be over there with New Zealand across their slate of USA games over in the NBA. But Taco Fall has been the talk of everyone in New Zealand. And, of course, the breakers potentially... We don't know whether he's going to come back. He's going to stay there. God knows. Who knows at this point? I think they're going to see what happens on the court over there in the US. But they've got a busy schedule coming up. They have three games in six days. Uh, Utah, Philly and Tulsa, they're playing OKC. Okay, I've got to get that one right. Uh, plenty of storylines. I mean, all eyes are on Kareem Lopez, the NBL next star, the future face of Mexican basketball, projected first round pick come 2026. You forget he's only 17 years of age. Jonah Bolden he heading back to Philly as well, which should be really exciting. And then, as you say, Taco Fall. So there were reports this week that the club are considering keeping him on. Uh, post this tour, I, I spoke to the club. They played a very straight bat. They just said, look, at the moment, he's just there for the tour and that's it. So mixed reports. Uh, I guess, guys, my question is, like, if he starts balling out, would he fit in with this Breakers lineup? And the other thing, I mm. guess, is that they're 2-0 and to start the season. If it's not broken, don't fix it. Mm. Certainly a tough one because I am of the long-standing belief that if you are 7 foot 20 and don't have a professional contract somewhere, you're in trouble and something's not going right. And Taco Fall has had his opportunities throughout the NBA, internationally, and we saw some of those highlights in China. It wasn't pretty. Yeah, I got to play against Taco in China in my last CBA season with Xinjiang, but one of the things we found, and we targeted straight away with our big man, and we had a 7 foot 22 guy as well, but <laughs> he moved his feet better than Taco did. And for us, as an offensive team, going against someone like Taco and the size, yes, he's an enormous presence. Yes, he can rebound and dunk and don't have to get off the ground, really. He just gets on his tippy toes and he dunks it. 
But the thing is, can you short roll? If a big mm. picks and pops, is your weak side going to rotate? Or mm. do you just attack him three or four trips up, the, up and down the court and then say, all right, he's tired, sub him off. So how's it going to play into the NBL? Because we've seen right now the NBL is one of the most dominant leagues in the world. Can he come and stand in this league? I don't know. Well, you told me off-air, Leonard, that you think Taco Falls an MVP contender. In Here the we go that with true? the off-air stuff. I, you told you, you told me off-air a lot of things that I won't say. <laughs> do it. No, do I won't it. do it. I won't uh, do it. Taco uh, Fall, yeah, I think we can agree there. He's probably not going to be the man. But you know what? Anything can happen. But anyway, Joe, thank you so much for joining us. And have a safe trip over there to the States. Thank you, guys. We'll see you when I get back. Thank you. Well, there we go, Tucker. I hope it works. You know, it's an experiment, but you know what? It'd be a draw card nonetheless. The marketing would be Kai Soto-esque, and maybe not that extreme, but it'd be right up there. But it's time to get into the sports bet segment. The trend is your friend. What's the trend this week? Well, it's rebounding. Something that I don't really like to talk about too much, but there is very good value within the markets there because the Sydney Kings, well, currently the league-leading rebounders, they've been dominant in that category. For a team that is stacked full of offensive talent, the way that they crash the offensive board, Lennart, is unbelievable. Cooks, Le Pepe, they go to the glass. Anytime someone shoots it, those two guys are crashing. And you know what I love now? Because they crashed the glass so hard, they're coming up against a team that doesn't really do it, and that's the Brisbane Bullets. Just haven't been able to show themselves crashing the glass, and then bang. If Sydney are coming in there, the trend this week is always take Sydney on the overs for rebounds. You look at this, you go through these clips, it's effort-based stuff. It's not a skill, this is effort-based rebounding. And also when you can bench press 180 kilos, you're not too bad at it. And push your down. opponent out the way, you can get any rebound you want. <laughs> Illawarra's been the leading <laughs> offensive rebounding team in the last couple of years, and the way they gave a taste of their own medicine yeah. is what, what you talk about what the numbers they could put up against Brisbane and what we've seen from <laughs> Brisbane. The first two weeks is concerning. I love that you're on board with the rebounds too, Felix. It's a very rare thing Creaky, for me to go you had, I think you had seven of them back in 2018 <laughs> in round two in Adelaide off this bloke's missed shots. Mate, it was, uh, it, was a, it was a good night for me. Yeah. <laughs> I saw Felix shoot the ball. I ran under the ring. No touch on the ring. I don't know if it's an FGA or if it's just a turnover, but you know the thanks, worst, Felix. You're you know the worst man. part of that? When I was standing out there getting ready to shoot, I can hear Joey Wright saying, let him go. Let him shoot. <laughs> let him shoot. Let him shoot. I'll tell you what, Joey, I did just that. and That's why I'm sitting here in this seat today instead of out there on the court. But as I've said, you look at how hard they push for this stuff. The Kings rebound average is 10.3 for Xavier Cooks, Cameron Oliver. These are big numbers across the board. And I'll tell you what, if these guys were on their own separate teams, they'd be averaging a whole lot more, but there is only so many rebounds to go around. So the trend last week was take unders against Bol Qual, and we took it and we won. This week, we're going with the rebounders for the Sydney Kings, especially coming up against the Brisbane Bullets. That's where we're going to be going. I like it. It's, you, you're doing your analysis, mate. Thank I like you. that. That's the next That's the next. I progress. appreciate that. Thank you for the analysis. Plenty more <laughs> coming up after the break. Chances are you're about to lose. For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website. <laughs> what am I cooking in that pot with those eyes? I don't know. I don't even want to know. Chin strap. With that man, <laughs> the chin strap beard. That was a college throwback. But it's time for Under Pressure. Top five people, teams, things, objects under pressure coming up in this round. We'll start off with number five, the Brisbane Bullets. An easy one. They need to string some wins together soon. Oh, I thought that would have been higher up your list, to be honest. Yeah. No, 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 because you know, you know who's next on it. Okay. It probably should have been higher. Yeah. Olgan Ulick. Oh! Yeah. Oh. Because Kendrick Davis is coming for him. If he decides to tweet that sort of nonsense out again, Leonard? Yeah, under, a little bit of pressure. But only, <laughs> he's, used to, he's used to that kind of stuff. Don't worry. Number yeah, three. Little. Number three. Taco Fall. Now, I'm chucking Taco in there because I think this is his last chance to get a proper professional gig. Yeah. Because right now, what he's performed in overseas, NBA was a flop. If he doesn't get something going here and at least play well, this could be the end of the road for big Taco Fall. Yeah, geez, you're not a Taco Fall fan, are you? I know. If I was seven foot six, I'd be sitting in Malibu right now with millions of dollars. I sometimes <laughs> can. I sometimes think maybe you should have yeah, used it. No, nah, we've seen you play. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> seven foot six would have changed a whole lot. Number two, we can all agree on this one, Isaac Humphreys. Uh, 
Yes. No, he's definitely, uh, definitely under pressure. under pressure. Yeah, I think. I How mean, is Isaac Humphries not pressure. under pressure? He's probably putting pressure on himself. Correct. He's not Correct. under and pressure. I, but I think because he's got a two-year, three-year guaranteed contract, so he ain't worried about. But also, they, if they if they go zero and three, yeah. and they play, I think they play Illawarra on Saturday, Hockball. They're going to be Hockball. He's in a whole lot of trouble. Yeah. And number one, and I hate to do it. But Mike Kelly, he's got to be in the hot seat at the moment. Right now, South East Melbourne struggling. We've blamed Nathan Sobey. We've blamed other people. Right now, Mike Kelly has to be in the hot seat here. I mean, it's inevitable when a team is 0-3. Yeah. If they go on 4 what happens then? The, the coach always gets scapegoated unnecessarily. I think that's the way a no, lot no, of things the first, happen. No, no, the first person is the, the import. They'll get rid of an import, and then the coach may go. Mitch? So... This is a what tough one for you. Hey, Felix, here you go, man. These <laughs> <laughs> are the lights are getting hot, aren't they? Uh, I don't think there's pressure right now, but I think the team has played two very good franchises. Yep. We're going to be top four. We talked about that. But do you just balance up the little bit of pressure on Sobey, Walton, Imports, Mike, all together, have those conversations, and a little, little less pressure? Please stop looking at me right now. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you what, you should, run, you, should, you should go for politics, Mitch, because you're <laughs> as perfectly as you could be. But let's have a look at the round ahead. Round three coming up. Plenty of big matchups, especially early on in the season. What pricks your ears here, boys, on the first page? The first game. Somebody's got to win. Oh. Somebody gets a win here. But the loser might be under pressure. Oh, I, I, I can guarantee you the loser is <laughs> <laughs> under pressure. Next one, Mitch. Uh, look, for me, I think Cairns are going to be the team that have to step up. They've got Armstrong back. How do you facilitate him into the into the roster again? Tazzy are going to try and steal that one, but I think Cairns are going to overpower him. Oh. No team, I've just looked it up properly, no team who has began 0 4 has ever made the finals in the 40 minute era. Oh, wow. So that would be South East Melbourne if they, oh. if they drop this one. Oh. Well, the second page as well. Saturday, Sunday, it all goes. Don't forget, Channel 10, Melbourne versus Cairns at 2.30 p.m. That one's going to be a ripper, especially with Taron Armstrong back in that lineup. We've spoken a lot about Cairns. I know a lot of people pick them. They up, like playing Melbourne too. But they yeah. love playing in Melbourne. That is a happy hunting ground in Illawarra versus oh. Adelaide. If Adelaide don't get the win, before this, it's going to be very, very tough I, right there, Illawarra. Seriously, Illawarra. lock me in for as much hawkball as we can get. <laughs> That's what they're rolling with, hawkball, with the Illawarra Hawks. They're so yeah. fun to watch. And, uh, yeah, Adelaide, you don't you don't ever like to look past like the first game because they want to take care of business at home, home yeah. opener against South East Melbourne. But if they drop that and they got to go to the Win Entertainment Centre and take on the full brunt of hawkball. Very... Oh. Dangerous game to play. Mitch, thank you very much for joining us. Are we going to see you somewhere playing in the near distant future or are we going to, is this going to Maybe. be a regular thing? Maybe. Uh, right now, I'm just enjoying some family time and I haven't had it for about eight years. I've been back to back nonstop. So letting the hair down, haven't got much right now. Like you, very thick, very lush, but I'm enjoying this right now. Good. Are you, is, is the NBL on the cards for a return if you do decide to play again? Not right now, but in the future it may be. Uh, Australia's always going to be home, so we'll wait and see what happens. See how I just tried on the closer to try to bait you into something there. <laughs> Mitch, no. Lennard, Pete, thank you very much. Don't forget, round three, NBL action coming up. Set to be a great one.